Keeping rabbits in a colony is a terrible idea. They get sick, they kill each other, they eat their litter. At least that's some of the feedback we received after publishing a video of the pros and cons of raising meat rabbits in a colony, because that's exactly what we do. Hey, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'd like to address some of those concerns and share with you our experience with colony raised rabbits and how that experience matches up some of those concerns. And number one, the number one thing I hear is that rabbits don't live in colonies in the wild. They are solitary animals. And here is the thing, you know, if, if you go outside into the woods, you know, you likely see individual rabbits, but those are American cottontail rabbits. And yes, they are solitary animals, but the breeds that most people raise for meat, like in New Zealand, they very much live in colonies in the wild. They are colony animals, right? So those are not the same as the American cottontail or domestic rabbits here, at least in the United States. So different species or different breeds, and you can't really compare one with the other. The other argument that I've heard, which is a good one, I think, is that rabbits are more likely to stick together in larger groups if predator pressure is high. And I think that's correct. And they are more likely to disperse and maybe form their own colonies and start their own families, so to say, if predator pressure is low. And one could make the argument that well in captivity, predator pressure is relatively low. And I would say it's probably lower, but it's not non-existent. I mean, we have a dog, you know, who runs up to the cage. We have, you know, wildlife, you know, raccoons, what have you, that I'm sure, you know, go up to the cage and rabbits run away and hide. You know, they are not enclosed in something that where, you know, no wild animals could get close to them. So there is predator pressure, but it's certainly different than if they were living in the wild. However, you know, again, by default and based on their genetic makeup and based on their traits, you know, the type of rabbits we raise are very much used to living in colonies. They are not solitary animals. And that leads us to the second concern is that, well, rabbits don't really like to be next to each other. You know, they get kind of, you know, they start, you know, harassing each other. They start getting aggressive. They'd rather prefer to be in eyesight or maybe be able to smell them, but still be separate. Well, here's the thing, based on our observations, you know, our rabbits have, depending on, you know, if there is a litter right now, or if there are two litters, they have plenty of space to get out of the way, either above ground and below ground, because they can, you know, dig down. But despite being able to get out of the way, our breeding trio very often sticks together. They are next to each other. They are on top of each other. Some of the kids are sometimes on top of the buck or the doe, they always stuck together, even though they have the opportunity to be somewhere else. You know, maybe one underground, the other one above ground or in different corners of the relatively large rabbit hutch that we have. But no, they choose to stick together. And so that tells me that they seem to be enjoying it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. So again, you know, I don't think that rabbits necessarily want to be apart. I think they feel comfortable if the environment is right, if they live in a stress relatively stress-free environment. I don't think they, we've never seen any aggression. You know, the, the buck has not, well, we'll get, we'll get to that, you know, they kill each other and they eat their kids, etc. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in a bit. Next one we should talk about is, you know, disease. Of course, you know, whenever rabbits are in close contact with each other, if they share food, if they share water, there is a chance of transmitting a disease. If one is sick, others can get sick as well, much like with humans. You know, if you send your kids to school and one kid in, in class is sick, chances are, some of the others will get sick too. And I don't necessarily consider this a bad thing because being exposed to pathogens builds immunity, you know? So I want my kids and my rabbits to be exposed to certain germs because that tells you very quickly which ones are strong enough to deal with the pathogens and which ones are too weak and that, you know, they either die then or you need to call them because they have, you know, they are not strong enough and you only want to breed your, mo your strongest stock and weed out the rest. And so by exposing them or by having them exposed to the same germs, you can, you know, weed them out relatively quickly. And I don't think that's a bad thing, you know? So I prefer the sick ones or the weak ones dying off or getting caught and retaining the strongest one that don't get sick despite being exposed to the same germs. You know, we had some rabbits in the past that got the sniffle, some, you know, respiratory infection and they ended up dying while everyone else in the same hutch, you know, in the same litter maybe even, was unaffected. And so that's a good thing. I don't consider this a bad thing. And that leads us to a related issue, and that is keeping 
the cage or the hutch clean. Now, of course, it's significantly easier to have a rabbit, an individual rabbit in a cage, you know, where the poop falls through, where the urine goes through to the ground, and there is nothing in the cage that the rabbit would be exposed to. Because obviously, being exposed to feces and, you know, and to, to manure is not a good thing and can promote disease in a way that even the strongest immune system couldn't handle. If you sit on a pile of poop all day, you know, you're gonna get sick eventually. But here is the thing, you know, generally with livestock, there are two ways that I see of dealing with manure. One is rotational grazing or rotation or rotating the animals. So they always get a fresh patch of soil to poop on. And, you know, don't come back until that, you know, poop has been assimilated in the soil or deep littering. And so we cannot rotate our rabbits, even though they have a fair amount of space. There is only, you know, they're always in the same area. So we leverage a deep litter method, meaning that we, every week, we add a carbon in the form of either wood chips or pine shavings or whatever, something carbonaceous on top that absorbs the urine that starts decompose or help decompose then the feces and the manure and it turns into compost and we just keep adding that stuff on and then every so often you know we remove a couple of layers and then pile it up again and with that you there is no smell there is no buildup of manure that can cause any issues and you know problem solved and i think that's the much better approach as far as we are concerned than keeping rabbits walk on wire the you know entire day and give them only a relatively small space but again you know that's us and it has worked for us relatively well and that's an easy way for us, at least has been an easy way to keep the hutch clean and, you know, avoid the smell. The next point that I hear a lot is, well, they kill each other. You know, they might, you know, the buck might kill the litter, the doe might kill the litter, the doe might kill the buck, you know, uh, the buck might kill other bucks and or the does or what have you. We have not seen this. You know, I think there are two factors that might influence aggression. One is if their environment is not appropriate, meaning if they're overly stressed or if they live in, in unsanitary environments or into small environments or, you know, whatever the case might be, if they're not happy, they might get aggressive. And then every so often you might have an animal that is just aggressive because of, you know, poor genetics, maybe because of whatever drama the animal experienced in the past. And, you know, if that's the case, you know, call it, you know, we don't want any aggressive animals in our breeding stock, in our in our rabbit hutch, obviously, and we haven't had, you know, so far. Based on everything that we've observed from our animals, from our rabbits, there is no aggression going on, there is no bullying going on. Yes, whenever you introduce a new, like not too long ago, we introduced a new doe uh, to our trio, and in the beginning, the, the buck was, of course, like, ooh, you know, a new doe, so I, I want a mate. And, you know, it took a couple of days, and then everything was fine. You know, they got used to each other. They are they are on top of each other. They are next to each other. There is no aggression. In particular, our buck. And again, you know, that might go back to genetics and, you know, and, and selecting for the proper temperament that you want. But that buck is the gentlest dude I've ever seen. You can pick him up. You can, you, you, you know, you can handle him like a, like a, like a kitten and he's perfectly fine. He's fine with the kids. We have some pictures where, you know, the young one, you know, is cuddling or is on the back of the buck you know, at night and it's absolutely cute. We've never seen any aggression whatsoever. There is nobody ate anyone so far that we could tell. And, it, you know, it's just been fine because they have enough space, they have an appropriate environment and they are relatively stress-free. And then the last thing that I want to address is the statement that a colony setup does not work in the context of a centralized food system. And I agree, much like management intensive grazing, you know, cattle, doesn't work in the context of a centralized food system. But here is the thing. I don't think we should be pursuing centralized food systems anyway. I think they are terrible. They are fragile. They are not good for the environment. They are not good for anyone. But having colony type of setups in small farms and having a lot of those small farms to produce the food that we need to eat is, is an excellent way of doing it. And there is nothing wrong with doing it in a colony setup. You know, we don't raise our rabbits uh, to sell them or we don't aim you know, maximum productivity and to get the most meat out of our rabbits, we do it in a way that is that we think is most conducive to the health of our animals, to the health of the environment, to our health. And the colony setup works incredibly well in that context. So yes, I do agree in for a centralized food system, it would not work, you know, but then again, you know, does a chicken house with thousands of chickens in the same, you know, chicken house really work? 
I don't think it does. Not for the health of the animal, not for the health of the consumer, and not for, you know, not financially for the chicken farmers either. You know, only the brands, you know, that that provide, you know, the chickens and, and that have that earn all the money at the end of the day, for them it might work, but it does not work for anyone else, including the animals. And so I, I see it the same way with keeping rabbits in cages. You know, it works for someone, I'm sure. Someone can make money with it, but I think in the grander scheme for the animal health, for the individual farmer, for the health of the consumer, I don't think it works very well. Neither would it in a colony setup would it work in a centralized food system. But then again, you know, should we pursue centralized food systems? I don't think we should. I think the the individual approach, the smaller, the small scale approach, doing it the right way, you know, rotationally grazing your cattle, keeping rabbits in, in small colonies, I think works much better in the overall context. And so that's what we do. That's been working for us. I hear many of the concerns. I'm not saying that colony setups is meant for everyone and everyone should be doing it the same way we do it. It's been working for us. I encourage you to think about it. If you're new to raising rabbits or if you consider raising rabbits, you know, consider it carefully, give it a try, try different methods and see which one works for you. The colony setup has been working incredibly well for us and I don't see us ever going to cages. I think I'd rather raise no rabbits at all than keeping them in cages, but that's just us. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, stick around. If you didn't, let us know in the comments, you know, how you raise rabbits, what you would do differently and what has been working for us. Until next time.